uh, one another important learning uh, for me it is not too much of a learning because i was i am always a very scared investor and i don't understand technology so that kept me away from bitcoins cryptocurrencies and things like that <coughs> so i did save a lot of money i did not lose money maybe i lost opportunities of making money some other people may have made money i didn't make money but i didn't lose money so i stayed away from bitcoin it worked for me uh, what will work for you 10 years later 15 years later you have to take a call but i stayed away from bitcoin and that uh, that worked for me another important learning is i have always thought that it is very difficult to borrow conviction if uh, say a sham shaker is convinced about a position in a particular share uh, should i also take a position i have always uh, felt you know i could never borrow conviction could i take somebody else's conviction that uh, babra is monish babra is investing in this so i should invest in that or sham shaker is investing or narain is investing so uh, or roshi jain is buying a lot of uh, bharti airtel so should i also buy bharti airtel i always thought that it is difficult to borrow conviction but now i am convinced about one thing after i stopped doing research myself i am able to borrow conviction this sounds little uh, dangerous so don't do it don't buy it because somebody else is buying what i am saying is when i see somebody else buying i do more research into it i say okay i didn't see something which they are seeing which i couldn't see right i still do what i have to do for example in bharti i hold more partly paid shares whereas the fund managers don't hold partly paid shares so one fund manager says oh i don't want a you know more leverage kind of a position because suddenly one day i'll have to pay the call money and another fund manager said i don't have i don't get adequate uh, uh, volumes in that so again uh, which is right so that fund manager has bought uh, bharti airtel the main share whereas another fee, uh, fund manager which is uh, roshi jain has done both she's got the main uh, bharti airtel and partly she's got bharti airtel partly paid right so i know in, in case of an emergency and she needs cash and she thinks she should get rid of bharti she's got enough bharti main share fully paid so which she can sell and bharti partly paid she can sell more casually so these are again strategies which uh, to me uh, these are borrowed strategies i would never have to do something like that i don't manage the kind of money that these people manage nor do i have the brains or the skill which these people have nor the team which they have so i i'm not comparing myself to them but i'm saying when i used to do research i had to do the whole thing myself the starting point had to be me i had to find i have to locate and then i would say oh this looks good let me meet the management right that's how we used to do research i'm talking from the 1980s now i don't do any research my research is totally outsourced i know whom to call and say kya lagta hai and uh, then we discuss and therefore some conviction gets built but i can build on other people's conviction uh, and i will also tell you you shouldn't build on other people's conviction you should have far more uh, bottom up research you should arrive at the company yourself and then start uh, buying any of these mentions today which i made which i think i said only bharti airtel I have Bharti in my portfolio. I bought Bharti at eighty uh, rupees to start with, sold at two thousand. Then the split happened, right? So I have done or twelve hundred, whatever. So I have done everything in Bharti. I will always have a position. Right now, I have a position both in the main share and in the partly paid. To that extent, you should know. And please click on um, the bell icon. Please subscribe. I need to increase my subscriber base. what are the other learnings that i had that uh, during the last 2 3 4 years is uh, the importance of cash a lot of people don't understand the value of cash they say oh cash mein koi return nahi milta hai. but i was sitting in cash in january february 2020 coincidentally I, by chance i had sold some shares in january and february and i was not finding the market attractive enough to or uh, invest the money then covid hit in the market fell and i could deploy my money but if you look at it this way that last 4 months or 5 months maybe is from november onwards i was accumulating cash and not investing because i didn't know where to invest and right so, so somebody could look at that float and say 4 months you wasted opportunity you could have bought this share went up from here to there i had no clue which share went up during that period but i didn't buy therefore i had the cash and therefore i had the ability in march 2020 because one thing is i was convinced that the human uh, being what he is mankind being what it is mankind will definitely be able to uh, overcome this uh, 
this Chinese uh, COVID virus, but they will come and they will come back. So Indian companies will come back. So I did even buy shares like Mahindra Holiday Resort, Thomas Cook and uh, Indigo saying one betting completely on the fact that one day all this will be back. Right. So I did it, but uh, don't underestimate the usefulness of cash during bad times. So during good times when you can, you should build a cash chest so that during bad times you will be able to uh, you will be able to build it so you will be able to use it right uh, also remember that narrative builds price so if you find that uh, there is a share which you will not buy because they are not adding any value in your life uh, make sure that you talk to people 20 30 years older than you and 20 30 years younger than you if somebody is adding value to somebody to an 80 year old's life Remember, in another few years, we will have a lot of 80-year-olds. So, a lot of 80-year-olds could be contributing to the EPS and a lot of 22-year-olds could be contributing to uh, businesses like Ola, uh, Uber, uh, Zomato, uh, you know, all those Swiggy, all those uh, companies, right? They could be contributing because they are earning very well. Today, a fresh chartered accountant who is a rank holder earns 30-35 lakhs as a starting salary. Will that person be too much concerned that uh, in a 80 rupee breakfast delivery there is 30 rupees of delivery charges? I don't think so. That person is going to not going to think like that. So these are all things which we are learning saying, oh my god, technology can do some of these things which are like magic and today you wonder why there was no Zomato and uh, uh, Swiggy long ago, right? Of course, the technology, the Google Maps, everything had to fall in place. But I am saying, so some of these services is something which uh, we would have loved to have uh, when we were younger, it was not there, but again, you have to build your own uh, narrative that will build the price and you have to build your own conviction to hold on to the same share for a pretty long period of time, right? Uh, and of course, when the old lessons didn't go away, right? So don't, uh, don't leverage, was always there. I would never leverage, I never liked leveraging, but I know people who had very responsible leveraging. One of those persons is uh, Rakesh Junjanwala. So Rakesh's way of leveraging was very nice. So Rakesh, let, let me give, the numbers don't matter, I am just giving you an example. Let's say Rakesh had a 10 crore portfolio. Let's say Rakesh had a 1 crore income and he had 10 lakhs of expenses. So he had, uh, so he, he had 90 lakhs which he could spare. He also had other income where uh, he had 1 crore of dividend and uh, uh, rent or whatever. He didn't have too much property but assuming all that together was another 1 crore. He would borrow in such a way that the other income could go towards repayment. We were still not touching his main income which still had a 90% cushion, right? So keeping his expenses low, having a cushion here and completely diverting the other income to repay loans. That was his way of leveraging and it made a lot of sense. And he, would, he was pretty ruthless in cutting positions and building positions. He was pretty good at it and he was never scared. He was one of those brave investors, right? So, so it helps to have that kind of an attitude. Uh, so, leverage, yes, avoid, uh, avoid it like the plague. I don't think leverage and investing is for the common man. For one, one Rakesh Bunchunjunwala or Vallabh, one Vallabh Bansali don't make the rule. They are the exceptions. As long as you understand that, it's uh, life is fine, right? Uh, another very important thing that I learned and this is an advice to DIY uh, people investing is hard it takes a lot of effort lot of uh, time uh, and a lot of uh, money if done wrongly so don't be in a hurry to be a diy building your own portfolio etc it's not going to be very easy so stick to a mutual fund if you till you don't understand mutual funds an index fund will do a good job after that you may have a choice after that you could be 70 percent indexing and 30 percent experimenting with your own money all that is yours but remember investing is not something which is very easy to do it is hard uh, putting together a portfolio is not easy to do putting a portfolio together for your retirement is far more difficult if you think you need help go out seek help and seek help from an advisor please understand people like me who are running channels can do only generic advice specific advice comes so don't come and ask me is this good 
of course it is good any new bond old bond everything is good is it suitable for you that is the question which only a financial advisor can handle or you should be very extremely interested in some things like that so that you pay attention and you learn and you keep learning then yes otherwise indexing here i come